our day and meet our needs. Then, of course, while we're having church here at 10, we have our Hispanic church uh, also going on at 10 in the gospel classroom. Now, we do not have church this Wednesday night. There's no church uh, with the Thanksgiving holiday, but uh, Man Church and Mom Church, there's only a couple weeks left. And so uh, right after Thanksgiving, we've got a couple Sundays till we take our winter break, and then we'll start that back uh, in the spring. Tomorrow night from 6 to 8, if you can volunteer to serve, and make desserts. We're doing our homeless uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow night. We're expecting around 100 or 150. They're collecting uh, new or used hats, coats, socks, gloves, blankets, and uh, we would absolutely love to have you take a part in that. On December the 3rd, we're just a few weeks away from our Christmas offering. This offering is going to be used for our nursery and our preschool wing. We want to make that safer. We want to make that better as Grace Point Baptist Church is a church for families and for kids. Uh, our ladies Christmas party is going to be on December the 4th uh, at 6.30 p.m. in the Gospel Classroom. Ladies, I know that you'll have a good time at that. And don't forget, on December 17th, we're doing a church Christmas play this year. And so we hope that you'll be a part of that. Now let's get started in worship, and I will see you after Thanksgiving. So Alan got saved here at Grace Point a couple of years back, but he decided Wednesday that he wants to rededicate his life to the Lord. Uh, so if you all will help me and rejoice with Alan here this morning. Woo! So Alan, do you know if you were to die today that you would go to heaven? Yes, sir. I believe that my brother, off, based off of your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk with newness of life. Church, let's stand and let's get ready to worship. Pastor Aaron. All right, let's all stand. Let's sing. So, how many y'all thankful this morning that you're free? Amen. Let's sing like you mean it. Come on. For a long time I traveled. Y'all sing this out now. Yeah.
thankful for that this morning. Whoo, man, ain't God been good to us in this place this morning. I'll tell you what, I, when I look at the history of my life, I can look back on my past, on my upbringing. I can look at how God has blessed me through time and through tribulations. I can look back and I can see the blessings of God on my life. I can look back. I like how the psalmist said, the psalmist said that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What he's saying is, is when I look back, Brother Josh, I can see the evidences of God's mercy. I can see the evidences of his promises on my life. Let's sing this song this morning. I see the evidence. Y'all sing it out with him now. Come on. All throughout my history, your faithfulness has walked beside me. Oh, that's good. Sing it out. Come on. The wind of storms made way for spring. Lord, a 
God. Give him some praise in his hand. I'm much fatter than Luke is, and it's taking a toll, Lord of God. Some of y'all going, why is he huffing and puffing? Because I'm worshiping and you ain't, Lord of God. God's so good to us in this place. I was talking to my daddy the other day. I said, Daddy, you know, am I talking too much? I said, Daddy, we ought to praise him because he's good. He's done, Brother Pastor Price, what God's done for me. Miss Kim, not just what he's done for me, but what he's using me to do. Pastor Clint, I, I, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing today, but God is so good to me I, that he's counted me faithful enough to put me into the ministry, and I'm so thankful. Then my daddy said, son, that's not why we worship him. Sure, sure, he's a good God. He's a great God. He's a powerful God. He's a wonderful God, but that's not why we worship him. We worship him because he's God. You say, Pastor Aaron, they're, 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 you don't know what my life is like. You don't know what mess I'm in. You don't understand the, 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 the life that I'm going through right now. Why would I praise God? You don't praise Him just because He's good. You praise Him because He's God. And because He's God, He deserves your praise. That's why in the lowest of our lows, we can worship Him. And in the highest of our highs, we can worship Him just the same because He is God. Let's have our ushers come forward this morning. But because he's God, he's good. And he's been so good to us. Brother Kelly, I find it so amazing. We're in this series about Jesus, about the real Jesus. I find it so amazing how that every other God wants us to give everything to him. But our God just asks for a little bit of it back. Give you everything. Would you just give a little bit of it back to me? And you know what? He don't really even want it. The point of your giving is not so that God gets your money. The point of your giving is so that God gets your heart. If you're here this morning, you're having a hard time letting it go. It's not a money problem. It's a heart problem. Let's give back to God this morning. Lord, I thank you for what you've done for us. Lord, I've already felt your presence in this place. God, thank you for being faithful to us when we have not been faithful to you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that during this time of true worship, as we give back to you how you've so bountifully given to us, Lord, I pray, God, that you'd bless it, that you would bless that gift, and, Lord, that you take this little that we have and do much with it. But then, God, that you'd bless that giver as you promised that you would so that we may give more. Bless the remaining of this service. Pastor Bryce, as he preaches here in just a little while. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. As the offerings plates are passing, we're going to sing a couple more songs. Brother Kate, go ahead. Y'all sing it now. A thousand generations from falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us And all who will believe Will sing the song of ages to the land Sing it, church Your name Oh, His name Is the highest Your name Is the greatest Your name Stands above them all dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, your creation cries. Yeah. the land. 
Church, your name is the it's highest, the highest is name. Your name it stands above the every other name. Your name. There is nothing that it stands above the name of them our them God. Sing it, church. Come on, all thrones, all thrones, oh, yes. and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name it stands above them all. Oh, church. It's the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. God, not just a sinner, but a filthy sinner. Paul says he was the chiefest of them. I think he got it wrong, Pastor Bryson, because he didn't meet me yet. That day, Midland, Texas, parking lot, Temple Baptist Church, May the 4th, glory to God, 2013. As a 19-year-old kid, a preacher's kid, Brother Kelly, I made three different professions in my life, but there had never been a change. There, I, I just did what Mama and Daddy taught me to do. They had never been real to me. I understood who God was, but He never became my God, and He never became my Savior. And if you understood, you say, Preacher, you, you were a preacher's kid. You grew up in church. I was just as much fit for hell as the worst person in this room, so to speak. I, can I tell you, I needed God just as much as anybody else. And when I knelt beside him. I, when I knelt there and I cried out to Jesus, he heard my plea. A holy God saved a wicked, filthy, rotten sinner like me. And I can't help but lift my hands and sing how marvelous. How wonderful. See, it's good that he saw who I was and saved me. Pastor Bryce, it's even better that he's kept me saved even after I failed him time and time again. I still live in this flesh. I still do things I ought not do. I, that which I would do, I do not. And that I would not do, that I do. And I'm telling you here this, in the, this morning in this church uh, that I can praise him today 
because of how wonderful, how marvelous his love is for me. Let's sing this song. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Sing it, Lily. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and I wonder how he could love me I'm just a sinner condemned I'm so God for being good. 
Lord, thank you for when you didn't have to, you loved me. Lord, you could have wiped us all off the planet and started over, but God, you chose. God, you knew what we would do before we, you even created us. Lord, you said your son was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, yet you still did it anyways. Thank you for dying. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for loving me. Lord, I pray if there's somebody here in this room, there's no doubt, God, there's somebody in here in a crowd this size that doesn't know the love of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Lord, I pray they wouldn't wait another minute. God, I pray they wouldn't wait another second. Lord, I pray they wouldn't wait till the invitation time. God, you could come back before then. God, I pray that if there's somebody in this room that doesn't know you as their Savior, that God, they'd come down and get that thing settled. Lord, we'll find somebody that'll take a Bible and show them how they can be born again. God, be with the remainder of our service. Lord, be with Pastor Bryce, God, as he preaches here in just a few minutes. God, fill him up, touch him. Lord, help us to have ears to hear, soften our hearts. God, I pray that, Lord, as he preaches the message this morning, that, God, it would not fall on deaf ears, but, Lord, that it would uh, get down into the deep parts of our heart and that, God, we wouldn't just sit in our seat and do nothing with it, but, God, we'd come down and allow you to change us so that when we walk out those doors, we're different than the way that we came in. God, thank you for being here. Please don't leave just yet. We love you. Christ's name I pray. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Right now it seems like the world is against you. And maybe it is. And right now you feel like your heart is in pieces and maybe it is you think you've walked every mile you can walk and you don't have the will to survive you have exhausted each ounce of your strength so I even try let me remind you that Jesus is for you and he is right for everything that's wrong I'm here to tell you he will not leave you he never abandons his own even though you may not see right now who he is and he is the love who is constant in sorrow that's who he is his plan is greater than what you have planned even though it's not clear to you for your good though at times we forget let me remind you Jesus is for you and he's right for everything that's wrong I'm here to tell you he will not leave you he never for you and he's right for 
for everything that's wrong. I'm here to tell you, He will not leave you. He never abandons His own, even though you may not see it right now. Even though you may not see it right now, you're not in this alone. church. Uh, man, Aaron was talking about being out of shape during worship. I broke a button off of my shirt. Uh, so <laughs> it must be the both of us this morning. Uh, but it's good to be here. It's good to see you all this morning. And as uh, Pastor Aaron had mentioned, Pastor Mark and Pastor Luke are out of town. They're in Texas preaching revival. So just pray that God will use them while they're there, that they will be effective and that God will uh, use me this morning to preach what God had laid on my heart for you guys this morning. Now church, listen, I know that you are without Batman and Robin for today, and you got stuck with the B team for today, as uh, me and Aaron call it, we are the B team, and, and we were talking to Paul Adams, and he was saying, so what does B, what does that stand for? And I said, well, it doesn't stand for backup, in case you're wondering, it stands for brilliant, or uh, <laughs> the brains of the operation, right? And so last week, me and Aaron, and you'll see the video on Facebook later today, me and Aaron went downtown, and we asked a question to random people on the sidewalk, and we said, how many gods do you believe that there are. And I want to read you just a couple of the answers that we got here. One of them said, well, I believe that there's probably several gods. Another one said, well, there's a little bit of God in all of us. And over enough span of time, we all will become God. One God isn't enough. A hundred gods would be better, but a thousand gods would be best. Church, can I tell you that we live in a world that doesn't know God? We live in a world that, that doesn't know which God to serve. But can I tell you this morning that there is one God. There is only one God. His name is Jehovah. There's only one God. His name is Jesus Christ. There's only one God. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There's only one God. It's not enough to believe in a God. You must believe in the God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, I want to preach a message to you this morning, very direct, very straight to the point, because I believe that there's somebody in here that is searching for the one true God, somebody that is searching for somebody to change their life, somebody is searching for the God Almighty Himself that will change their life around. I hope that it's a reminder to you this morning of who Jesus is, the one true God. And I want to preach you a message this morning called Jesus the only Son of God. And as we're going through this sermon series of the real Jesus and who is Jesus and what a phenomenal sermon series that it's been so far and uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be able to preach a message out of this series. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. We'll be picking up here in verse number 15 and here in just a few moments as we go over Jesus, the only Son of God. The God that came to this earth to die for sinners like you and me, the God that came to this earth, 100% man, 100% God, not half man, not half God, not all God and no man, not no God and all man, but he's 100% God and 100% man. Jesus, the one and only Son of God, the one and only God of this book. Church, can I tell you that if we believe that this book is flawed at all, then we also believe that Jesus is flawed. The Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So if we believe that there's any flaw in this book right here, then we also believe that there's a flaw in Jesus. And if there's a flaw in Jesus, then we might as well go home right now. And what's the point? But can I tell you that there is no flaw in this book. There is no flaw in Jesus. The Word was God and the Word still is God. This Word is true. And there is only one God. Jesus, the only Son of God. He's the perfect Son of God. He's a sinless Son of God. He is the only Son of God. A perfect God who decided that he was going to leave a perfect place to come to earth, a broken place, to die for sinners just like you and me. 
He left a peaceful place, a perfect place, a purposeful place, to come to a broken place, a confused place, a wicked place, to come to a lost world to save you and me. Jesus is the only Son of God. Jesus is the only way to get saved. Jesus is the only way to meet God the Father. Jesus is the only way, and he came willing, he came loving, and he came knowing exactly what he was going to have to go through while he was here. He came knowing exactly, I think my mic turned off, he knew exactly what he had to do. He knew exactly that he was the only one that could be the Savior of the world, and yet he came anyway. Jesus, the Son of God, knowing that who he would die for would be the murderers, that would be the adulterers, that would be the liars, that would be the thieves, that would be the prostitutes, that would be the drug dealers, that would be the homosexuals, that would be the transgenders, the politician, the bitter, the rich, the poor. For you and for me, Jesus came anyway to die, to lay down his life, his perfect life, becoming sin, separating himself from the Father so that we could be joined together. He is the only way. He is the only Son of God. Me and Pastor Luke were having dinner, uh, or having lunch, rather, a couple weeks ago with David Gooden. Is David Gooden in here today? Okay, there he is. We were having lunch with David Gooden, and one of uh, uh, David's son, Cash, is in our youth group. He's one of our youth group kids, and uh, I got permission before I embarrassed him. Um, he was in, we were having lunch with him, and he was telling us about a quiz question that Cash had in one of his classes. And the question was, what are the six religions of the world? And Cash wrote down, Christianity is the only religion. And can I tell you that Jesus is the only God, and that even though Cash may have gotten it wrong on his test, even though he had gotten it wrong to his teacher, he was spot on to the Father. We live in a world that is so lost. We live in a world that doesn't know who the real God is. And church, can I encourage you this morning, it's our job to tell a lost and broken world of the one true God of the one and only Son of God. But if he's the one and only Son of God, why do we always allow other little g-gods to scoot him over off of his throne? Why, why do we allow the busyness of life to scoot God over, Jesus, the one and only Son of God, why do we allow the busyness of life to scoot him over? over on his throne? Why do we serve all of these other gods? I promise we'll get to our text this morning. But why do we serve all of our other gods, these little G gods, that when Jesus comes back, they won't matter? We can't take any of it with us. Robbie Harrington said it best when he was here. If you were here for revival, he said, if we could just take the lid off of hell for just one second, and if you were to hear the screams of hell, your job wouldn't be so important tomorrow. Your sports wouldn't be so important tomorrow. All of your little G gods wouldn't be so important tomorrow if we could just take the lid off of hell for one second. So we know that Jesus is the only Son of God, but is he your only God? If Jesus, the only Son of God, were to come back tomorrow, how would that change our today? And yet we let the, the busyness of life take our attention, pull our attention, pull our time and our effort away from the one and only Jesus Christ, from our only, the one and only God of this world. We can't take our football with us. Look, I love sports more than anybody else probably in this room. I love sports. I grew up playing sports since I was a kid. I love sports, but can I tell you I hate sports because they take our young people away from the Lord. They take our young people away from church. They take our young people away from the one and only true God. You can't take your football with you to heaven. You can't take your baseball with you to heaven. You can't take your basketball with you to heaven. You can't take your volleyball with you to heaven. You can't take your house with you to heaven. You can't take your car with you to heaven. You can't take your checkbook with you to heaven. You can't take your bank account with you to heaven. So why do we allow these little G gods to scoot the one and only Son of God off of his throne? And why do we devote our time and all of our energy to that? Jesus, being the one and only Son of God, left a perfect heaven for a broken world to die for sinners like you and me. Colossians chapter 1, verse number 15. Say amen if you're there says this, that who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones, dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him and created for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. 
And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it is pleased to the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him reconcile all things unto himself. But I say, whether they be in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated in the enemies of your mind by the wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. Let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful to be in your house today, Lord, that, that we're, Lord, we are so thankful that you are still God and you are still on the throne and, Lord, you are still in control. Lord, whether we serve our own little G gods, Lord, you're still the one and only God. You are still Jesus Christ. You are still the beginning and the end. You are still the Alpha and the Omega. You are still the creator of this world. Lord, help us to never lose sight of you. Help us to never lose sight of you of your goodness. Lord, we, we just ask that you meet with us today. Lord, I know that there's somebody in here that is searching for you. Somebody in here this morning, Lord, is searching for the goodness that only you can offer, Lord. And I just pray that, that you will bless our church this morning as we meet together, Lord, and as we go over uh, your word, Lord. And we ask all of this and all God's people said, Amen. I, I won't preach long. We'll probably, in fact, get out a little bit early today. And uh, if I can have an amen right there, I really thought one was coming. And uh, But I, I won't keep you long, but I, I want to preach a message just straight to the point because I, I truly believe that there is somebody in here that is searching for the one and only God the Father. And so I have three points for you very, very quickly. Number one, Jesus reveals to us the Father. In verse 15, it says that the God himself is invisible, that Jesus is the image of God. Well, if you're in here today and you say, well, how do you believe in a God that you can't see? How, how do you believe in an invisible God? Well, uh, I, I've never seen Wi-Fi, but I still believe in Wi-Fi, right? How, how do you believe in a God that you can't see? Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the image of God. God is unseeable. God is untouchable. God is unknowable. God is unapproachable unless we have somebody to reveal him to us. Jesus, the only Son of God, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, and you can never know God the Father unless you first know him through God the Son. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, then you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. I love how Adrian Rogers puts this. When he's talking about Jesus, he puts it like this. If on my mother's side, I am younger than my mother, but on my father's side, I am older than my mother and just as old as my father. On my mother's side, I got thirsty. On my father's side, I created all of the oceans. On my mother's side, I got hungry, but on the father's side, I'm the bread of life. On my mother's side, I wept at the tomb of Lazarus. But on my father's side, I said, come forth, and I raised him from the dead. Jesus is the one and only God. Jesus is the, the image of the invisible God. Number two, Jesus reigns over all. Verse 16 says that he created all things. And since he created all things, he reigns over all things. Now, you say, I, I don't understand. How does that work? How can one person, how can somebody reign over billions of these people? How can one person reign over everything on earth? Well, because he created it. He created everything. He is the God of creation. You say, well, I, I don't understand it. Let me put it to you like this. If you were to ever to come over to our house and you were to meet my son Beckett, and if Beckett cried for anything, he reigns over all of us at the house. If, if, you, if you don't know Pastor Mark, uh, he will not deny Beckett anything. Nene won't deny Beckett anything. Uncle Mater and Uncle Wes won't deny Beckett anything. Uh, bless his heart. He reigns over all of us. And so, so pray for us. But, but Jesus, the one and only Son of God, he is the God of creation. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the creator. He's the beginning and he is the end. He reigns over all. Philippians 2.10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in the things of heaven and the things of earth and the things under earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory to the God the Father. Jesus is the only Son of God. Jesus doesn't only have reign over you and me. Jesus doesn't only have reign over every creature that walks this earth. He doesn't only have reign of the wind and the sea, but he also has reign over Satan and his angels. 
See, I think a lot of times that we get in our head that Satan has more power than what he actually does. We fall into these diverse temptations and we, we get depressed and we get down upon ourselves and we begin to think how powerful is Satan and we forget how powerful is the one and true God. And we allow Satan to have this power over us and we almost morning that Satan is not equal to God, that God reigns over Satan, that God reigns over Satan and his angels, God reigns over hell, God reigns over everything. And if you remember the book of Job, when Satan is walking before God and God says, Satan, what are you doing? He said, I'm walking up and down the earth. I'm looking for somebody's life to destroy. I'm looking for somebody's life to mess up. I'm looking to get somebody addicted to drugs. I'm, I'm looking for somebody that I can devour their life like a roaring lion. And God said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And God gave him permission to attack Job's family, but also he gave Satan parameters. He said, you can do anything that you want to Job, but you can't take his life. And so as we read through the book of Job, Satan does everything that he can to Job to get Job to turn against God, to get Job to turn against the one and only God Almighty. We see that he takes away his farm. He takes away all of his animals. We see that he takes away his servants. He takes away his family. He takes away his hell. But the one thing that Satan couldn't take away was Job's life. Because Satan and his angels are reign. God has reign over Satan and his angels. God has reign over everything in this world. And don't you for a minute think that Satan has more power than what he actually does. Don't you think for a minute that Satan is just as powerful as God and is equal with God? Because God reigns over all. God reigns over everything. Number three, Jesus reconciled the lost on the cross. If you will, look at verse number 21 with me. It says, And you that were sometime alienated in the enemies in our minds by wicked works, yet now have been reconciled. Jesus, the only Son of God, reconciled us on the cross. Jesus, the creator of all creation, was killed by the very ones who created him so that we can have a relationship with God the Father. He had to separate himself. He had to leave a perfect place of heaven. He had to leave the Father. He had to separate himself from the Father, taking on the sins of the world so that we can be with the Father, so that we can know the Father, that we can know God the Father through God the Son, the one who created heaven and earth, the one who created the oceans, the one who created the light, the one who created man, Jesus, the one and only Son of God, took on the cross for you and me because he's not willing that any should, per should perish, but all should come to repentance so that we, none of us have to go to a place called hell, but we can all spend an eternity in heaven with a perfect in a perfect place with a perfect God. The only Son of God, 100% man, and 100% God came to this earth for one purpose, for me and you, to die for the sins of the world. What does it look like for a perfect God to die for the sins of the world? He was beaten. He was mocked. He was hung on a cross. I imagine with the flesh hanging down from where they had whipped him so bad, and as he tried to carry the cross up the mountain of Calvary for you and me. He went through all that suffering. He went through all that pain because he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. He's not willing that any should go to hell. God didn't make hell for us. God made hell for Satan and his angels. He's not, he's not willing that any of us go to hell. But did you know this morning, if you're that one person that is searching for God, the real God, the one true God, the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, if you're that one person searching for God, the goodness of God, you won't find him anywhere else you won't find another God because Jesus is the only Son of God. Jesus is the only way to go to heaven. He's not willing that any should perish. Not one. The world paints such a pretty picture of what hell is really like. We see it a cute little devil with a cute little pitchfork and how hell is going to be a place while, while my friends are going to hell and when I get to hell, I'm going to go and I'm going to have a good time and uh, I'm going to do everything in hell that I do right now. I'm going to smoke in hell. I'm going to drink in hell and I'm going to have uh, beers with my friends and I'm going, to, I'm going to cheer to Satan. Can I tell you that is not the reality of hell? If you read the Word of God in the book of Luke, it tells us, Jesus tells us what the reality of of hell is really like and can I tell you you won't be drinking anything in hell can I tell you that you won't be doing any partying in hell hell is a place of torment hell is a place of darkness hell is a place of screams a place that you will spend for all of eternity a place without God 
Hell is a place where you will remember. You'll remember the preacher telling you about hell. You'll remember the preacher telling you about Jesus, and you'll remember denying it. You'll remember rejecting it. You'll remember your family that is still on earth, that is denying God, that is rejecting God. And, and we know the story of the rich man and Lazarus and that, as he, he begged for somebody to go and tell his family. And he couldn't do it himself because it was too late. That's the reality of hell. Hell is not this pretty little picture of a cute little devil. Hell is a place of torment. But through Jesus, the one and only Son of God, that's where we find our refuge. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And in a case, case that is not clear enough, whosoever, that means anybody. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you've done in the past. God's grace has already covered it. God already died for that sin. God died for the sin that you're going to commit tomorrow. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. God's grace already covered it. God already died for that sin. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will not perish, will not go to a place of hellfire, will not go to a place of torment, but will go to a heavenly place, a perfect place, a place where we will worship God for all of eternity. Church, can I tell you that if we can't enjoy worshiping God now, why would we enjoy worshiping Him for the rest of our eternity? Jesus, the one and only Son of God. If we want to meet God the Father, we first got to know Him through God the Son and what He did on the cross for you and for me. He died for your sin and for my sin. Has there ever been a time in your life where you just gave it all to God? And you said, God, I know I'm a sinner and I'm tired of living the way that I'm living. I'm tired of living a lie. I'm tired of living on my own. I'm, I'm tired of going through all these struggles and challenges and depression. I'm, I'm tired of facing it alone. Has there ever been a time where you said, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for my sins. You rose three days later. Lord, will you save me? Has there ever been a time in your life? I can tell you that there may be a bunch of gods in this world, little g gods, but there's only one God that can save. And his name is Jesus Christ. Through what he's done, on the cross. It doesn't matter what your background is. He can save you. The choice is yours. It's called the gift of God. And like any gift, it's your responsibility. It's your job. The ball is in your court. Whether you accept that gift or whether you reject it, whether you push it away. It doesn't matter what your past is. Jesus has already died for it. Jesus has already forgiven it. His grace covers it all. There, there was this woman, before she came to know Christ, she thought she was too bad. She thought that God couldn't save her because of everything that she's done, everything that she did to rebel against God on purpose, that, that, that she thought that God couldn't save her. She began to tell her testimony about how she was in a group that, that openly worshipped Satan. And they did everything that they could to throw anything back into God's face. And she said that me and the, this group of women, we would all purposely get pregnant so that we could go and we could have an abortion to show the God of creation that we are the gods of destruction. We would go and have abortions to throw it in God's face. We did some terrible things. But she began to say, but then it hit me. One day I realized that that's all we could ever do. We could never go toe-to-toe -to -toe with God. We, we could simply try to dishonor God and rebel against God and do all these things against God. But there, there came a time in my life, as she said, that where I knew that God ruled over all. The God of the creation is the one God. He's the almighty God, but he's also the forgiving God. He's also the gracious God. That even though all the stuff that she had done in her past, that God would still forgive her. The one that's in here that is searching for the one God, the God that will love you, the God that died for you, that laid down his life for you, the one God will forgive you too. The one God died for your sins too so that you can know when you die that you spend all of eternity in heaven, so that you know when you die that you'll be worshiping the one and true God. But has there ever been a time in your life where you said, Lord, will you save me? I'll finish with this. I'm all done. When I was six years old, I promised my dad. My dad tried to explain to me the gospel at a very young age. I was six years old, and I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I couldn't understand it. But I knew one thing. 
I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to spend all of eternity with Jesus. And so I, I promised my dad at VBS that I would walk to the back and I would talk to a counselor. And uh, her name is Miss Allen, and she still goes to the church that I grew up in. And she walked me through that. And that's the day I got saved. Six years old, I can tell you the exact spot that I was in, the exact person that led me, the exact chair that I sat in. That's a day that you will never forget because that's the day that God will change your life, that God will make a complete 180 out of your life. Has there ever been a time where you've made that decision? Nobody's looking around. Everybody's heads are bowed. Everybody's eyes are closed. I want to ask two questions this morning before we dismiss. Number one, is there anybody in here that would say, preacher, that's me. I know I'm going to hell, Lord. I know that if I were to die right now, I would go to hell, but I want to go to heaven. Or maybe you're in here this morning and you don't know where you're going, but you've never made that decision to trust Christ, but you say, I want to go to heaven. Or is there anybody like that that would say, I want to go to heaven. I'm just not sure if I am. Nobody's looking around. If that's you, would you raise your hand so that I could pray for you? God's not willing that any should perish. Is there anybody in here this morning that would say, I don't know where I'm going when I die. I don't know that heaven is my home, but I want heaven to be my home when I die. If that's you, would you raise your hand so that we can pray for you? Nobody's looking around. I see one hand. Praise the Lord. You can put that hand down. Is there anybody else that would say, I've never made that decision, but today I want to make that decision? If that's you, would you raise your hand? Nobody's looking around. I see that hand in the front row. You can put it down. In just a moment, we're going to have a time of invitation, and I'm going to have Pastor Clint, and he's going to come forward, and he's going to show you from God's word how you can be saved, how that you can get your eternity secured, how that you can know when you die that you're going to spend all of eternity with Jesus, the one and true God. My next question, is there anybody in here that would say, I know I'm going to heaven, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, God has saved me, I know I'm going to heaven, but there's been some times in my life where I put little G gods on the throne of where the one and true God should be. And the Lord spoke to my heart about that today. If that's you, would you raise your hand? We just want to pray for you. We're not going to embarrass you. Go with many hands. You can put your hands down. We're going to have a time of invitation. If the Lord has spoken to you, as Caleb and Lily begin to sing, as the Lord spoken to you this morning, would you come? If you raise your hand this morning, you say, I need to be saved. I know that if I die, that I will go to hell. Or maybe you don't know. If you raise your hand, you say, I want to know how to go to heaven. We're going to have counselors up here. Miss Kim is going to come. Pastor Clint is going to come. And they're going to show you from the word of God how you can know how to be saved. So if God spoke to your heart, as they sing, come to the altar. God has spoken to your heart this morning. Won't you come? If you raise your hand this morning, you say, I don't know where I'm going when I die, but I want to know. And you raise your hand. Would you come forward so we can have one of our pastors and Miss Kim show you from the word of God how you can know how to be saved, how you can spend all of eternity with God the Father. The one true God, the one loving God, the one forgiving God, the one gracious God. Would you come this morning and get that settled? Can I tell you that the Bible says that life is but a vapor. It's here, then it's gone. Don't walk out those doors knowing that there might be a chance that you're not going to heaven because you never know when it's your time. Don't leave here this morning. Don't leave that unsettled. If you need to get saved this morning, once you come forward, you can talk to Pastor Clint and Miss Kim so that you can know for sure when you die that you're going to heaven. some things that you've been putting on the throne of God and you just need to surrender it. Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your sports, maybe it's your kids' sports, whatever is taking the place of God in your life, will you come and get it right this morning?
Will you come and just surrender it all to God? Give it all to Him, the one true God. said, I need to know God the Father. We want to give them time. We know that the devil can get into your head and can uprise your nerves so that they won't come. But I just want to give a few more minutes as, as they've seen this last verse. If you're that one person that raised your hand to get saved, don't put it off. Don't put it off another minute because you never know if you're promised the next minute. You never know if you're going to make it out those doors. You never know if you're going to make it to your house today. The Bible says that it's but a vapor. As they've seen this last verse, if that's you, if you raise your hand and you said, I need to be saved, won't you come? Thank you for this morning. I'm so thankful for Grace Point Baptist Church and uh, the, the people that we have in this church. There's truly no greater church than the church right here and all of you. And uh, can I say that, that as good as this church is, this church wouldn't be as good if we didn't serve a good God. And uh, I'm so thankful for the God that we serve. We're going to do one more verse of invitation. We're going to sing one more. If you, rose your, if you raised your hand, nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to look around. We're going to do one more verse of invitation. We're going to give them time to come. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for Nobody's looking around this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We got some people making decisions this morning. We don't want to rush what God is trying to do here in his house. I know it's past 11 o'clock, but church, just pray. Pray for the decisions being made that God would give them clarity.
for the one that's searching this morning, there's still time. We don't want to rush what God is doing in his house this morning. If you're that one person, if you're still searching for God, if you're missing the goodness of the Almighty God, won't you come? We just ask that you be respectful uh, to the ones making decisions this morning. Uh, We're going to pray, and I'm so thankful for the one and only uh, God that we serve, the loving God that we serve. And Lord, church, I know it's past 11 o'clock, but I I don't want to be the one person that rushes anything that God does. And for the chance, for the chance that somebody comes to know Christ, I don't want to be the one person that gets in the way of what God is trying to do. So we're, we're going to pray this morning, church, and I just ask you to be respectful for the decisions being made. And uh, yes, yeah, so she got saved. What, what's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Praise the Lord. If we can rejoice with Sarah this morning. And, uh, I don't ever want to, I don't want to ever hold God to a time limit. I don't want to ever just end at 11 o'clock because I need to get to lunch. I want to allow God to work like he worked in Sarah's life. That's what it's all about. Church, let's pray. Lord, we're so thankful that you are God. We're so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful, Lord, that you are still God, that you are still on the throne that you are still in control, Lord. We live in a dark and crazy, unusual world, Lord, but we know that even through all of that, even through all the darkness, that you are the light of this world, Lord. I, I thank you so much for the opportunity to, to be here this morning, Lord. We, we thank you. We thank you this morning, Lord, that Sarah joined the family. of. Lord, we're so thankful for that decision. We're so thankful for her, Lord. We're so thankful for our church here at Grace Point and our pastors and, and Pastor Mark and Pastor Luke. Lord, we're so thankful for your goodness. Lord, help us as we go our separate ways today. Help us to be safe. Lord, help us to remember that you are the one and only Son of God. Lord, we ask all this in your name, I pray. Amen. Church, you are just missed. Thank you. Did you know Sarah? Does Sarah come with y'all? Yeah, her uh, her husband.